What's going on, Wolves? We have an exciting episode for you today with some huge news. Very big, very exciting. It's a really busy time of the year. Spring sports are getting started. Seniors are signing up for their exit interviews and finalizing their plans for next year. Students are putting in requests for classes they want to take next year. And building administrators are beginning to plan for next school year already. Today's episode includes a feature story by Angela Gibbs and Aislinn Griffin about Mr. Cutler's flight program. We have Ashley and Cassidy in the studio to talk about Tolo. Lily will be bringing us our Wolf of the Week, and we have our athletic director in the studio to share some big and exciting news. Physics of flight taught by Mr. Cutler, you will learn a variety of topics and fulfill a CTE or lab science credit. The kids learn anything and everything about aviation. So we do aviation maintenance, construction, piloting, air traffic control, uh, weather, cross country planning, uh, aeronautical engineering. Pretty much if it deals with aviation, you're going to be exposed to it. Physics of flight is open to grades 9 through 12 and will yield a unique learning experience. Have a blast, man. You're in the shop, you're learning power tools, you're learning about things you never even thought possible before, and um, you're not going to watch any PowerPoints. <laughs> it's all active. You're doing it. You're having fun. I really like the hands-on of it. We're not just like reading about like how to drill through metal or wood or whatever. We're actually doing it. It was a challenge. I felt really productive. I felt really on top of things. I felt really enjoyed it. While physics of flight is not a prerequisite to aviation ground school, it is recommended as it prepares you with valuable skills. I hope to like go become a pilot of some sorts. I've kind of been thinking about becoming like a missionary pilot or something. So aviation ground school, uh, in order to become a pilot, you must do two things. One is pass a knowledge test and then also pass a flight test. And aviation ground school prepares the students to be able to pass that knowledge test. If you are looking for a future career in aviation, manufacturing, or piloting, this is a great CTE pathway to take. For Pack TV with photojournalist Aislinn Griffin, I'm Angela Gibbs. We have some really great elective courses here. We're lucky to have a teacher like Mr. Cutler. I really want to take video too with Mr. Halp next year. Oh yeah, I am looking forward to taking band again. Let's cut to the studio where we have Ashley and Cassidy to talk about Tolo. I'm here with two people from Dance Committee. Can you introduce yourselves? My name is Ashley Harris. And I'm Cassidy Pearson. Uh, we are talking about Tolo. What is Tolo? Tolo is a semi-formal dance, and it's traditionally where the girl asks the guy. Uh, when is Tolo? Tolo is this Saturday, March 2nd, from 8 to 10.30 in our comments. How much does it cost to go? Um, good question. It costs $15 to attend. Uh, where can you pay for it? You can pay for it in the ASB office with cash, card, or with a check. Do you need a date for this dance? No, you do not need a date. You can just show up and have fun if you just want to. Uh, I believe that is all our questions. Thank you, ladies. Um, yeah. Any shout-outs? Um, Shout-out to Sophie Oaks because shout out Sophie Oaks. she is our head dance committee leader, uh, but she has a running start, so she's not even here right now. Shout-out to Aurelia for um, making everyone go to Tolo. You all should go. <laughs> yep. Are you going to Tolo? Yes, I am. How about you? Yes, I am. We have some incredibly big news coming up that will have the impact on the culture of our school. But first, we have a story about a couple of our seniors. Congratulations to Maddox Hodge and Jack Ellison on their commitment to Western Oregon and Washington State. You guys have been working hard the past four years, and we're all proud of you. Now on to a snippet of Coach Baldwin's speech. A legacy is what do they inspire people to do once they're gone, right? What do people want to do? What is the drive? What is the encouragement they got from watching these two dudes carry themselves in the hallways, right, playing on the field? And how does that encourage us all to carry that on? That's the legacy. And I know you two are going to live in my heart, okay? Your names are going to come out of my mouth for a long time because of the way you carry, or you carry yourselves, okay? Um, Jack, same thing. You just heard from Jack and Maddox on where they'll be attending next year, and here with me I have two of our other fellow Wolves who will be sharing where they're planning on going. Can you guys introduce yourselves? I'm Lynn Mathena, and I'll be going to UTEC uh, EMT training program down in Arizona. Cool. Hi, I'm Rayleigh. I will be going to Centralia Community College to do business and further my education and get my real estate license. Perfect. Thanks. Hi guys, it's Zach Beals. 
And it's Cassidy Pearson. We're kind of here to mainly talk about what we're doing after high school because it's pretty important. Yeah, as seniors, we just want to let our freshmen know that it's really important to know what's next. Um, what are you going to do after high school? What are your plans? Um, well, I'm going to be attending Evergreen State College in the 2024 semester and um, mainly focusing on Native American history. Um, that's the main goal, kind of looking at a teaching kind of position. But uh, what about you, Cassie? Yeah, I'm going to be attending Washington State University next year with a communications degree and a minor in sports journalism. Shoot. Yeah. I what in, you, yeah. Like write articles about Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> what inspired you to want to do Native American history? Um. Well, my family has Native American roots. Um. Mainly with Hopi and the Navajo tribe. So, just kind of wanted to get more immersed in my culture and kind of see other cultures as well. Um. Because I've always been interested in Native American uh, history. What about you? Yeah, um, I've always been really interested in sports. Um, that's something that I've grown up around, really. It's kind of the community. My parents both played sports. We're always at games and stuff. And just seeing the TV, I always wanted to do like acting or whatever. I guess reporting isn't really acting, but it's just a chance to be on the TV. And yeah, I love talking about what I love. So I love sports. <laughs> awesome. Well, I hope we've kind of inspired you guys in some way. So, we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you. Go Wolves! Hey Wolves, the takeaway is that high school graduation isn't the end. It's the start of another chapter. We'll share the plans for a few more seniors each week. It is time once again to honor our Wolf of the Week. We got a little behind, so we actually have three Wolves earning the honor today. Let's cut to Lily Wilson to give a shout out to a few more of our amazing students. What's up, Wolves? I'm back here with our Wolf of the Week, Adeline Rice. Adeline was nominated because she's an excellent leader, and she plays basketball, and she's a drum major in band. She's always cheerful and kind to everyone. Thank you, Adeline. Do you have any shout-outs? I would love to give a shout-out to Mr. Landowski. He's always such a big supporter of everyone in the band program and me personally. Andre Madison. Andre is nominated because he's kind, hardworking, supportive, and nice. Thank you, Andre. Do you have any shout outs? Um, I'm going to shout out Ella Springer because I think she should be the next Wolf of the Week. <laughs> Back to you. We've been foreshadowing all episode. Can you guess what the big news is? Pack TV reporter Tara met in the studio with Nikki Nelson, our athletic director, to discuss the reveal of new logos for Black Hills High School and the accompanying rebranding campaign. Hi there, this is Tara reporting for Pack TV. I'm here with Ms. Nelson and we're going to talk about the new logos. So why did we rebrand Ms. Nelson? So I think Black Hills High School has a rich history and a long legacy, but we didn't have a real strong brand. Everybody knows the wolf head, but everybody uses it their own way. Some people in red, some people in blue, some people with an outline. You may also have seen kind of a cartoon wolf head that we've used on a few things. And unfortunately, that's a, a trademarked logo that belongs to a college, so we can't use it anymore. As part of that, when we discovered that, we decided it would be a great time to roll out some new and unique trademark logos for Black Hills High School. Um, so we went through a process with a committee of folks that were students, staff, parent, uh, stakeholders and we work together to figure out what kind of logos we needed and then what those logos should be. All right, okay, yeah. And then what in, uh, what went into the design, like the structure and the color and um, how can these uh, logos be used and not used? Sure, so the goal is to develop a logo that will become as strong as the Nike Swish or the Green Bay Packers green and gold G. Something where when somebody sees it even far away from here, they'll know where it came from. So we started by talking about what made some of those logos so great and what made them so easy to recognize. And then we led into what we wanted involved in the logos for Black Hills High School, what we thought they should convey about the place that we all come every day. So we talked about some of the natural beauty around us. We talked about some of the characteristics that we think students at Black Hills have. And then we tried to figure out how to make those look like part of our logo. Um, in our suite of branding, you'll see we've got a head first mascot logo, which tends to be used mostly in athletics. Yeah. We've also added the side view of a howling wolf, a full body wolf that's got all yeah. kinds of uses. And then some combined wolves. One of the things I'm most excited about is the new BH for Black Hills. You know, unfortunately, uh, sometimes you recognize a T from across town and everybody knows whose T that is. Yeah. 
well, pretty soon they're going to know whose B and H these are as well. So yeah. I'm excited about rolling Absolutely. those out and making sure they're easy to identify for people in our area. We've got a few guidelines for the logos. Again, part of the reason logos become strong is because they're consistent. Like, for example, your Stanford S on your sweatshirt. Yeah. Everybody knows who that belongs to, but part of that is because nobody changes it. Mm -hmm. They use it in the same structure and the same format on everything they do. And that's our goal with our logos as well. We've got a, a consistent blue, a consistent red, a consistent white, and a consistent gray. And now we'll talk about where those things can be placed and what can be changed on a logo. Um, there are some things that can be changed and some things that can't. All of our logos can be reduced down to one color, but when you do that, there's some guidelines on how you do that as well. Okay, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, can we talk about the timeline for these changes? Sure, we've got all the logos in-house now, and so at this point we're going to start to roll them out. One of the things that makes this project unique is that we did retain the legacy logo. So if you go to a basketball game next year and see that on a uniform, it will still have a place there. In fact, it's still at the middle of our basketball floor in the yeah. gym. Um, but I think you'll start to see some of these new ro uh, logos coming out more and more in different ways. Some of them on paper products, some of them on signage, some of them on uniforms over the course of the next few months. All right, awesome. Glad to hear that we are putting ourselves out there a bit more. All right. Well, Hoping the strong brand goes with a strong school here yeah, pretty quick. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Miss Nelson. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. Last but never least, Zach is back with another Vox Pop. What is up guys, it's me Zach Kamak here and today I'm back with my ever so loyal cameraman Fabian Leva. What is up Fabian? What's up? Okay, so we're going to be going around the beautiful school of Black Hills High School once, once, once again and we're going to be asking the student body questions about like, you know, where they want to travel, you know, because we're, we're quite interested in that so we're going to see what's the most popular vacation spot at Black Hills High School. Let's get into that. Probably uh, Cairo, Egypt, um, mainly because of the pyramids. Uh, being able to see the majestic nature of that and all the math that went into the ancient Egyptian culture just be really cool. Australia. Why Australia? Crocodiles. I really want to travel to the Truffle Forest from the Lorax. Why is that? It's a magical, whimsical place. Me personally, I would love to travel to Busan, South Korea. Why is that? Because it's it's where my grandma grew up back in the day, and uh, I just want to I want to go visit. I got tons of family over there too. It's magical, man. Spencer, what about you? I'm being held against my will. I probably want to travel to like Tacoma, Washington. Looks like there's a lot of fun stuff to do there. Yeah, Tacoma's like the safest city in Washington. Is that true? Exactly. Like, you, you will not get hurt going there. I want to travel to the San Pedro of Funchal in Portugal and then uh, rotate to Madeira, Portugal. <laughs> That's where Cristiano Ronaldo was born and raised, so. Great. Jameson, what February about you? 5th, 1985. <laughs> I'm traveling to the future. Why is that? Because I just watched Interstellar and it looks cool. Italy. Why Italy? Because I want to get some gas food. I really want to go see St. Petersburg. Why St. Petersburg? Uh, it's a really historically significant place. Lots of religious background there. Lots of uh, historical background. Everything. It's a major city. Lots of cool buildings. Uh, I'd really like to go see the Great Pyramids. I think that'd be cool. Wow, that is the second time we've heard that. <laughs> Thank you guys for answering our questions this week on Pack TV. And big up Liam with a four underscore 13 for filming the intro and the outro to this. He's our new interim cameraman, so big up Liam. Hit him a follow on Instagram.com. <laughs> this is Fabian and Zach Kamek from Pack TV signing, signing off. off.